covered everything on there. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I think I got it. Or oh, I'm going to cover it in a second. Okay. So, papillary carcinoma, guys, the most common of all thyroid cancers, actually accounts for 75 to 85% of the malignant tumors within the thyroid. Okay. It affects women three times more likely than men ages 20 to 50 years old. Okay. It is the least aggressive of all the thyroid cancers, meaning that it's, the, it's least likely to metastasize versus the other cancers we're gonna talk about. Okay. Even though it's the most common, it's the le least likely to metastasize. All right. And it usually spreads through the lymphatic system to nearby cervical lymph nodes. That's why evaluating the cervical chain is so important. All right, again, everything in blue. Did you guys get my chart I sent you guys yesterday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that helpful? I thought that was a good uh, summarization of uh, everything um, as far as pathology goes. Mm -hmm. Question, Mr. Smith? No, no. Okay. Uh, let the uh, chart. Okay. But uh, you said uh, this uh, uh, support, you will teach us the pathology? Teaching it right now. Yeah. I've been huh? teaching it the past two days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I changed my mind. I got selfish and I want to teach everything. <laughs> okay? So mm -hmm. that's papillary, papillary cancer, guys. The most common, the least aggressive, spreads through the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Sonographically, this is also a painless, palpable <clears throat> nodule. Uh, with an incomplete halo of ill-defined borders, meaning that sometimes it won't have that complete border around it all the time. Sometimes it may only be half. I don't know why Siri does that. Sometimes I was talking yesterday and people's phone was going off and I didn't even say, hey Siri. <laughs> um, these masses are usually taller than they are wide. That should be in blue right there, guys. These masses are usually taller than they are wide. Okay. Um, and large cervical lymph nodes, if when you evaluate the, the neck and cervical lymphadenopathy present in the absence of a palpable nodule. So even though that nodule is not palpable, but you happen to see a nodule out and you look at the cervical chain and you see it in, uh, in large lymph nodes, then that definitely can still be uh, papillary cancer if you caught it early on, right? And here's just some, some examples right here, some images right here for you guys. And look, look how all of these look so different, right? All of them look really different. So even look at look at this, how you can see the border really defined on this side, but you, you just see the difference right here, right? You don't really see it. So that's what they mean by incomplete halo, meaning that the, the well-defined border doesn't actually go all the way around the whole tumor itself, okay? And you see just the differences in the uh, appearance of papillary cancer, even all thyroid masses. That's why. What's so important? Well, the FNA biopsy is so important, right? Because I, we can't eyeball this and see that these are papillary thyroid cancers. Okay. We can't eyeball this. So you this also uh, do a fine needle biopsy on just regular cysts just to determine a little loud? If the, if the cyst is complex, if it's a simple cyst, then no, they're, they're not going to do a biopsy on that. But if the cyst is complex, but, uh, but say for instance, you had a big, big cyst, I don't know, 10 centimeter cyst, right? Then they're gonna definitely, when they aspirate, they're probably gonna test that fluid, but they won't, they, I mean, it's, it won't be any any tissue to, to you know, kind of kind of get from a cyst. All it's gonna be is fluid. Mr. Seal, Mr. Seal, you okay? Yeah, yeah. I thought something was going on. You say, uh. <coughs> okay, so that's papillary cancer, guys. The most common, the least aggressive, spreads through the lymphatic system. Okay. Follicular cancer, the second most common cancer, accounts for 10 to 20 percent of all thyroid cancers. Okay. Usually affects women, ages 20 to 50 as well. <laughs> with increased incidence of areas of endemic goiter, right? These areas where they're iodine deficient, right? Because that's what endemic goiter is, meaning that the, um, the resources in this area 
don't have a lot of iodine there. <clears throat> it is more aggressive than papillary, papillary cancer. Mm -hmm. And there are two types of follicular cancer, minim minimally invasive and widely invasive. And the difference between the two is that um, minimally invasive would be well encapsulated. It's definitely confined to the area of the thyroid. And widely invasive is not encapsulated. It will invade the nearby structures um, in the neck. Okay, meaning that it can it can project out and put pressure on extrinsic, uh, extrinsic pressure on organs around it, like the trachea, like the esophagus, right, like the carotid carotid artery that lies lateral to it. Okay. That would be the difference in those uh, follicular carcinomas. Yes, Mm -hmm. or just for, uh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, <laughs> spread through a blood screen for the two of them, or just uh, widely invasive? Both of them. Oh. Both of them. Both of them. <clears throat> okay. And also, unlike papillary carcinoma spreads through the cervical lymph nodes, follicular carcinoma spreads through the bloodstream. Okay. So it can travel a lot, which is why it's, a, it's more likely to metastasize than follicular cancer, I mean, than papillary cancer, because through the bloodstream, you can get to the bone, lungs, brain, and liver. Okay. That's also associated with Herkel cell carcinomas, uh, which is grouped with follicular cancers, but are a little more aggressive. Okay. I just want you guys to know that they're grouped with follicular cancers. These cancers are usually uh, presents as a slow growing, enlarged, painful, I mean painless solitary thyroid nodule. Okay. It may be indistinguishable. I can't tell the difference between a, a follicular cancer and an adenoma by, unless we're doing it by FNA. So therefore the whole mass may have to be removed and you have to test the whole sample to see if that is cancer or malignant or not. Sonographically, it's indistinguishable from an adenoma. So um, they may do an FNA and it may come back where it's negative, right? That's what that's saying. It may come back where it's benign, where it may be cancer cells within there. It may, the whole thing may not just be made up of cancer cells. And here it just, here goes like how to do an FNA right here, guys. Like and just looking at this echogenic ring, you guys see that? How that how this mass is hypoechoic, but has that or you know, has the shadow and that ring behind it. Just looking at that, that looks like I don't know, that could be a calcified wall. Okay? That really when you think about a needle and it hits something um that's hard, it's gonna cause that that's that it may not even get in that tumor itself, like unless you're able to penetrate that that hype that echogenic wall or that calcium surrounding that mass right there. So you can see the needle coming in. Y'all see the needle right there? Mm -hmm. That's the actual F needle coming in to, to do the FNA. It's trying to stick and get this tissue. However, you know, they may or may not be able to get it because this wall looks very echogenic. It looks calcified mm -hmm. and it may not penetrate through that. <laughs> and this, you see here goes a, another example. Got the um, um, well-defined borders right here. And here on the cross section, guys, you can see it right here. And you can see, you can even see all our structures right here, guys, right? You can see, what's this vessel right here? Here. Okay. No. IJV. 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 It's, it's usually bigger than the CCA right there. Okay. We have our trachea right here, esophagus right there, spine. You have your, um, these look like the, uh, some of the, um, stab muscles right here, anterior to there. So same thing, guys. You can look at an ultrasound. You can also look at um, you can also look at other. You can look at CT and MRI because we all take the same axial cuts, right? We take the same images and cross section. You just have to be able to identify those um, those different structures. So you always want to have some kind of background and cross section because sometimes you may have to look at the CAT scan or the MRI in order to kind of see what I'm doing with the ultrasound. But the images are taking the same axial slices that we take, the same uh, sagittal slices that we take. 
and that was um, follicular cancer, Dallas. So sometime in the uh, picture A, it was ecogenic uh, border, but in picture C, it's not really the whole well, thing. Well, this is a this is a CAT scan right here, so it's gonna, oh, it's gonna look oh, different okay. than what it looks like on an ultrasound. Oh. Right, it's not gonna look exactly the same, like, right. especially with the contrast. The contrast is gonna be different. Okay. And just looking at this, this is a, this is a CT with contrast in it. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna it's gonna make right 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 that. Yeah, so it's gonna make it look different. Because you see even the even the blood vessels are echogenic, meaning that they have contrast in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so medullary cancer, guys accounts for um, uh, about 5% of all thyroid cancers. It is a new growth endocrine, uh, new growth uh, derived from the parafollicular or C cells. Okay. Medullary cancer carcinoma derived from the parafollicular or C cells are cells that secrete calcitonin, right? I mean calcitonin, right? Our thyroid calcitonin uh, secretes thyrocalcitonin. I'm trying to give you all the synonyms because I made the test already. Okay, it is um, when the serum calcitonin is elevated in the in the body, it is used as a tumor marker for medullary carcinoma. So if you have ele remember we we said that uh, when we're talking about calcitonin, um, that if it's elevated, it can be used to um, detect cancer as well, detect <laughs> medullary cancer. Be more precise. This is an aggressive cancer that spreads through the cervical lymph nodes to the liver. Okay. It's an aggressive cancer that spreads through the cervical lymph nodes to the liver. Wow. Okay. This one is only slightly higher in females to male ratio. And only slightly. You got it. You, you ladies are safe. <laughs> okay. May also be familial. Meaning that, um, of course, if somebody in your family has it, you're likely, 20% uh, of cases uh, is familial, meaning that somebody else in your family has medullary cancer of the thyroid, right? The mass in the neck is so associated with dysphagia, difficulty swallowing and harshness because this mass can, of course, invade other extrinsic um, anatomy and push on that anatomy causing you to have hoarseness or difficulty swallowing if it's pushing on the esophagus, right? The esophagus is like, you know, it's a free free flowing tube, but if it's not able to spread the way it needs to, it's gonna be difficult to swallow, dysphagia. And patients often suffer from uh, symptoms related to endocrine secretion, right? Hyper hyperthyroidism, okay? So that's gonna be like, what guys? Profuse sweating, you know, um, you know, thirsty, hungry all the time. Heat tolerance. Uh, heat tolerance. Into heat intolerance, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my folks. I love it. Okay. It appears very similar to papillary cancer in that it's a solid mass that's hypochoid, that has microcalcifications, and it may be hypervascular. Okay. It may be hypervascular. So don't forget guys, to evaluate, when you, when you suspect uh, papillary, I mean, um, medullary cancer, evaluate the liver and the entire neck area for cervical lymph node enlargement mm -hmm. for metastasis. Because okay. that's how it, it spreads through the actual cervical lymph nodes. <coughs> so our two that spread through the lymph nodes so far are gonna be papillary, medullary. Okay. Follicular spreads through what? The bloodstream. The bloodstream. I'm really trying to hit you guys with the important facts, not all the minutia of uh, the stuff that, uh, you know, that's in the text. I'm trying to keep you guys, I want you guys to pass the registry first and foremost, so I'm trying to hit y'all with that registry information, you know, um, that's gonna be more likely to be on the exam. So, um, those, are, those are our first three guys, papillary, follicular, and medullary. Papillary, follicular, medullary. Any questions about any of those three? I'm gonna talk about two more. Okay. So the next one, guys, actually three more. The next one is gonna be anaplastic carcinoma, which is undifferentiated. That's what anaplastic means. Meaning that these cells don't have an assignment yet. 
right? Kind of like stem cells, right? Meaning that these are not specialized cells. These aren't, um, these aren't parafollicular, follicular cells of the thyroid. These aren't, you know, cells that are special, uh, hepatic cells. These are undifferentiated cells, which is why it's so rare because these cells haven't been assigned yet. Kind of like stem cells that, like are the first, the first few cells of a fetus that haven't been assigned to different, you know, different parts of anatomy yet. Okay, so that's what anaplastic means. It is the rare cancer that occurs in less than 5% of all thyroid cancers, maybe about, I think about two to 3% actually is the number, okay? Females are at greater risk. It is the most aggre aggressive cancer with widespread metastasis and it doesn't have a great prognosis and it is considered the most deadly. It is considered the most deadly. And it's the rarest of all cancers, thyroid cancer. With this cancer, guys, you're gonna have a rapidly uh, enlarging, hard, fixed mass, usually a solitary nozzle, because most thyroid cancers are solitary nozzles, okay? It's gonna be locally invasive with widespread metastasis, okay? Invasive meaning that it's not just gonna stay confined to the area of the thyroid, it's also gonna be able to push out and, uh, and hit those extrinsic organs and outside structures of the thyroid. Usually causes death due to invasion into the trachea. Okay. And these are just some um, some some symptoms that patients usually suffer from: hoarseness, cough, dysphagia, and difficulty breathing. Okay. Any questions, guys, about anaplastic? Undifferentiated cells.